Welcome to the wide world of esports, a show devoted to all things esports. I'm your host, Catherine Knorr. Today, we're talking about promoting esports in Hawaii, HPU and the Hawaii Esports Alliance. With me today is Jordan Oliver, esports manager at Hawaii Pacific University Esports Arena. Welcome, Jordan. Hi, thank you so much for having me. All right, so how long has HPU had an esports arena? Uh, so 2017 is when we kicked open our doors at the uh, HPU Esports Arena here at Aloha Tower. Um, that got started with John Gotanda, our president. He sort of had this vision of pushing forward the innovative experience and innovative aspects of education. Like, how do we tie in innovation more? And saw the writing on the wall that esports was this perfect opportunity. So 2017 is when we officially opened up. You know, that's kind of early on, because if you look at UCI, they opened around 2015. So you did not lag too far behind them. Not at all. Uh, very prescient move. Uh, really, actually, uh, super impressive to be there that early. The first in the state of Hawaii to, to do the esports arena and go with a, a collegiate presence in esports. How did it come about? Uh, really, I think a lot of strategic planning, looking at the strategic plan and sort of that long term vision of, uh, you know, how do we connect these emerging industries, the, the trending <clears throat> emerging new jobs? How do we make sure that our students are ready for these industries? And how do we make sure that we're staying on trend with, at, you know, innovating uh, continuously, not just uh, getting complacent in what we we're offering here at HPU? So uh, esports was decided that it was just a perfect fit and we had a great space and some generous amount of resources were put in to make it happen. Was there any kind of um, backlash or did anyone kind of think it wasn't a good idea or was it something that was widely considered a good um, fit? I think it's been seen as a great fit uh, across the board. We've had a lot of support. The the sort of elevator speech is enough to get people interested, but when you really look at the statistics and the numbers and how much value it adds to our students uh, and to the community around us, I think that it became apparent that this was a really good move. You know, Hawaii Pacific University is pretty unique because of its location. Tell us about its location. Yeah, so we're still sort of um, consolidating and uh, as part of our plan, filling out that Aloha Tower uh, marketplace area. It's beautiful. We're right on the water. Uh, we have our dorms are right above the arena, you know, for the most part, as far as the ATM aspect goes. Uh, so I can't imagine a better experience as a college student, honestly, to have this amazing 3000 square foot arena downstairs uh, on this downtown urban environment. You know, we have shuttles that connect to our other campuses in Waikiki. Uh, dorms over there as well and our lower campus. And uh, yeah, it, it's a unique offering. It's such a diverse uh, population of students. We have a lot of cool partnerships uh, in the community. Um, and then of course, just what a more, more beautiful spot, right? You can go to the beach after you're done with your esports and uh, it's a pretty good deal. You know, the Aloha Tower is um, kind of, it's a landmark that people have seen. It's iconic. And I think, it's interesting for those people who have never been to Hawaii that this is a university that is taken over this area that's traditionally more of a tourist area where um, uh, and and uh, where there were restaurants and there still are some restaurants there. But it is uh, really like if I was a student, I would really seriously think about being a Hawaii Pacific University shark. Um, so what is your background in esports, Jordan? Yeah, it's a good deal. Um, so yeah, my background in esports, uh, I kind of exist at this true crossroads of esports, gaming, uh, it, but education uh, chiefly as well. So I started out marketing, freelancing, web design, a lifelong gamer, tech enthusiast, and travel uh, junkie sort of. So Esports really exists at that perfect spot of connecting those dots of this international industry, uh, tech and gaming centric. So my clients tended to more and more skew towards that. And I was also uh, getting into journalism and writing. So I ended up teaching uh, high school Adobe certifications, uh, taking on all kinds of jobs, freelancing and writing for publications like Game Rant uh, and doing some freelance editorial things. So 
a lot of knowledge gaining there and uh, sort of seeing it through and capping it off with uh, esports management tracked from, from UCI uh, to sort of after the writing was on the wall, this industry is not going away, right? So uh, being in education, saw how much value I could add to my students, really. I think that this generation of students that's going to be graduating, they're going to be the first wave of, that have existed with an esports industry that, you know, existed as they were growing up. You know, it wasn't this, oh, this is new. It's, oh, I can aim for this. I can be a streamer. I can be a, a TO tournament organizer or, uh, you know, whatever. It's a pretty endless. And we can talk about that. But as I saw that being possible, I said, you know, education is where I really wanted to be because I wanted to provide that value of passive pass it through the community uh, and make esports more equitable and representative. And the education was a perfect fit. So a couple of years later, uh, here I am at HPU. Fantastic. So let's go on a photo tour of the facility. Yes. All it's right. Yeah, sorry, I'm excited about this. So this is our current configura uh, configuration, basically, actually. So you notice it's a little bit spread out for COVID to keep it safe, but we have our uh, Aurora, our, R12s here, Aurora R12 computers from Alienware. So those have 3080s in them, RTX 3080s, if that means anything. Pretty overkill for League of Legends. We are ready to admit that, uh, but it's pretty cool to be to be able to come and play like Halo or Elden Ring and blast the graphics up. Uh, and those monitors are all 240 hertz, a millisecond refresh rate. So, uh, you know, helping combat that ping rate that we're notorious for here in Hawaii with uh, the best equipment we can to make up for latency and things like that. Um, so, yeah, and the, the chairs are also Alienware and they are super comfortable. We really encourage you guys to stop by. Um, so, yeah, we're open to the public. You can come in. Um, as you can see, lots of spaces here. Uh, we put the streams up on the walls. We have a streaming booth off to the right and uh, students can come in, groups can come in, varsity teams, club teams, local teams, we encourage to come in, sort of use this hub. Uh, I mean, it's beautiful as you can see, and it's even really more compelling at night as the lights go down and we turn up the RGB and we get some of the projectors going. Uh, yeah, so as you can see, in the background there, a little bit more filled out. So this would be a, like an older configuration, but this would be for tournaments. So uh, just a couple of weeks ago, we had a Super Smash Bros. tournament and it looked like that, except it was console was all, uh, you know, Switch and Nintendo Switches in the background. Um, so this would be a situation where we would have our, our tournament organizer, our shoutcaster doing some commentary from our um, computer here at the time. It was looked like Overwatch or playing. Uh, but the space is large enough and we have enough PCs that we can actually flex out. Like I said, we have 18 gaming PCs on the floor right now, but we can easily push that to 36 uh, um, and, and beyond that as we sort of build out these community events. And then, um, as you'll see, we also have some console gaming. So sort of anywhere along the peripheral wall, essentially, is going to be filled in with non-PC gaming. So PS5s, uh, Series X, uh, Xbox uh, X, PS4, a Nintendo Switch, we have several. Um, and then we also have like more fun party games that our students and community can come in and play like, uh, you know, Mario Kart, Guitar Hero, those sort of sort of games. But we're constantly adding more. We also have air hockey, by the way, for, for anybody who wants to jump in and maybe just rattles and make some noise while, they're, while their friends are playing. Uh, and then we have VR. So we have Quest 2 out right now. We have a couple of headsets and we encourage people to come try new stuff. If there's anything you're interested in and want us to throw up uh, on the on the software wise, we're happy to do it. We're happy to download it and, and put it on. Um, things keep rolling out constantly and we like to stay updated. VR is a really, really, really interesting uh, aspect. It's not quite endemic to esports yet, but we'll see where that goes. We just like to stay current. You know, I, I think most people are you know, kind of considering VR to be sort of in the wider scope. And that's kind of exciting that you have that there. Cause I think, I think that esports is kind of the first metaverse. I mean, when gaming is and, and that's where we've seen NFTs. So a lot of the, um, a lot of where we are going technology wise, sort of esports was the beginning and gaming was the beginning. What do you think of that? Yeah, it really is this nexus of emerging technologies, right? And to keep people interested, they have to stay competitive and the IPs are constantly shifting. It's it's not going anywhere, that's for sure. And I think uh, esports is going to double down on this 
dynamic of lean in entertainment versus lean back, right? Like we don't want you to sit, kick back, kick back and watch the game. We want you to be as involved in poss as possible, whether it's in chat or augmented reality or VR later. Um, absolutely. Yeah. I think esports was sort of the beginning of bringing people into it, right? Like the metaverse, Fortnite, yeah, Epic Games trying to make a push for it. I mean, obviously that was born out of uh, competitive gaming and collaborative gaming. So I think we'll, we won't see that change anytime soon. And uh, VR is definitely a strong component of that because um, it's hard to place where it exists, but the component of VR, at least the headset, right, is going to be part of simulation esports at the very least. Uh, you know, you look at simulation driving and it really, really hits home when you're able to put on that headset. It's like, well, this is... This is a whole new, new experience. Sure. In a few weeks, I'm going to have a guest uh, talking about VR tennis. And so I'm looking forward to that. Um, so let's get back to the ping issue. OK, you mentioned that Hawaii is sort of famous for the ping. Well, mm -hmm. my uh, guest last week, uh, Johnny Ryan Weaver, is a um, was a professional um, esports athlete, and then he um, now puts on events. And he said that his strategy is that he might like just lose by a little bit because where he's located, the ping is great. He's in like more, more uh, rural Oklahoma. And so his strategy is that then when he's in person, he just blows him, his opponents away because he has to be so much better than his opponents because of the ping. So how does how do players in Hawaii deal with that? Yeah, uh, that's a really good point. Uh, so it's like sort of that high altitude training concept, right? Uh, uh, when you're playing on sea level, you really just have that edge. Um, take the weights off your hand. Maybe we should w put weights on our thumbs too, and then we can take them off on game day and really get that extra edge. But yeah, I mean, there's definitely uh, something to be said for it. When you get that, when we do get the opportunity to um, put our players on an even playing ground and sort of like a true equitable experience uh, with like parity as far as ping goes. Yeah, I, I'd say there's that massive bump that's noticeable with local players. Um, you know, you can lean into teaching fundamentals also and just really be heavy on that and knowing that boost is going to come and sort of uh, strategizing on that end. Um, there's only so much you can do, though. Uh, you know, there's pluses and minuses. I think that like anything, uh, we on the other side of the coin we're, when we're only playing against local players we're all we are playing with the same you know on the same playing field as far as that goes so we're all we are used to dealing with that with the ping and um i think technology will, it's going to get better and better and uh, it'll become less and less of an issue sure so what do you think about the overwatch league coming to hawaii and playing at uh I think it's amazing. I think anytime something that great can land on our shores, it's good for us, for the community of esports. I think it just points to the opportunities uh, that they're only going to continue growing here locally. Um, the the white esports alliance actually that that we're part of here is trying to push that forward, right? So you see more of these marquee events, see more of the the beautiful benefits of having events in Hawaii and connecting, um, you know, Asian teams uh, just across the Pacific, actually, and just having this sort of hub that we can come to to have these amazing matches. It's great. I think it's only a sign of things to come. I can tell you that um, it's only the beginning, I think, as far as what you're going to see roll through. So tell us about the Hawaii Esports Alliance. What is that? Yeah, so the Hawaii Esports Alliance is sort of a, a nonprofit gathering stakeholders uh, in, in Hawaii uh, interested in moving forward esports uh, community aspect, building a building an industry, you know, on islands. Um, we really want to give support, education, and resources to, to the people looking to build out that esports pipeline. Uh, you know, we won't we don't want anybody left behind. So um, definitely check them out. Um, I feel like the, the idea is to give that support where it's needed, make sure that from, you know, elementary school through our middle school to high school um, leagues and students that there's support, that there's opportunity and that we can, you know, safely build out this, this esports experience, take something they're doing and really, really carefully make sure that we're adding value and we're legitimizing esports, uh, not only as, as an industry, but as an experience, right? Because this is valuable time in their lives. We want to make sure that we are 
uh, bettering our students and the community members and, and giving them something that at the end of this journey, whether they go through higher education or straight into the workforce, they're going to be ready for what's coming. And not only that, they're going to be a part of building what's coming and making sure that it's coming here. You know, we want to make sure that that esports industry grows as it should and that these opportunities are not just events that roll through. Uh, we want them to be sourced and locally, uh, you know, people employed locally that are running these events and bringing them to us. So that's that's sort of the idea of the Alliance. And it's something that HP is uh, happy to be on board with. UH is a part of, uh, and it's it's really, it's going to continue to grow. It's in, I think we're going to see a lot of really great things coming from it. Sure. Now, is the legislature, uh, are any legislators, legislators, uh, members of the Hawaii Esports Alliance? Uh, not in the official capacity, but we are definitely looking at and talking to everybody. I mean, we're we're it's it's early days, right? So um, it's very early days for the for the alliance. Um, but yeah, absolutely, we're we're hoping to bring through some some good showcases and really show the opportunity and make sure that we do get those people on board with what we're trying to do and the messaging is clear. Um, you know, we want to we want to absolutely um, carefully craft this whole project and make sure that you know from a parents on up, from the students on up, uh, from the parents to the legislature. Like, we wanna make sure that um, we're not just starting at the top. We're, we're literally going through, through, through everything. Sure. And a previous guest was Heather Blair, who's with the uh, Cinema Esports Alliance, and they promote um, having esports events in cinemas. Have you seen that in Hawaii at all? I can't say I've seen it locally. It is funny that you mentioned I was thinking about this last week, uh, just in, in personal time, uh, in conversation with a, a couple other esports colleagues uh, about the opportunity of that, like these community spaces and these uh, sort of community centric spaces as we get post COVID uh, or into uh, at least a modern COVID era uh, where we can have events open up. Yeah, that's an important thing, right? Making sure that we're taking community available resources, whether privately owned or not, but running these community centric programs of esports and utilizing these empty spaces. That's just a really great example of what esports can provide. Um, you know, it's a new genre of culture, uh, not just industry. So there's going to be these chances for these like pop up opportunities. We can really use this. Uh, these tournaments and these events and like empty theaters as a call to action to reinvigorate these spaces, bring people out and push out forward other industries. Uh, you know, there's great spaces for vendors and, and, and new things and education programs. Uh, and that's just a great space like libraries, community centers, all of these areas that we can we can reinvigorate with esports. That's sort of the idea. I love that. Yeah, and where we've seen um, COVID impact those spaces, like we've definitely seen movie theaters close in Hawaii. And, and, you know, if to make it a more profitable um, industry or space to have other opportunities like eSports in that space, I could see that could work. I agree 100%. Yeah, I mean, it's been tough weather in COVID. I, even I can speak for the, you know, HPU's esports arena, um, you know, it takes, takes a huge hit and you really are, are committing to sort of trying to see this through and weather, weather that storm. Um, and we've lost some esports spaces and gaming spaces locally, you know, throughout the pandemic. Uh, so it's important to sort of fulfill that commitment to double down. We're going to, you know, we're going to go back out there. We're still here. We want these opportunities to grow. I can tell you um, anecdotally that there's a lot of business interest in esports spaces, event spaces, broadcast spaces, locally on, on island and in state. And, and I think we're going to see more and more of that happen. Um, so, yeah, I would love to see these, these sort of people that could use that almost lifeline as they're listening to, you know, think tech and wide world of esports and go, maybe I'm a good fit for that. You know, reach out, reach out via this channel or our channels, however you can, uh, because there are a lot of people looking to connect these dots and, and make this happen. Uh, there's a lot of great talent out there. And I think there's a lot of money and funding op uh, opportunities out there as well. Sure. And I could even see um, there being a tie-in with restaurants or with malls um, because, you know, um, it isn't easy to make a living purely on uh, retail or or selling food and drink. So, and combining them does make sense, even though it kind of goes back to that land center situation. But you know, it was very successful in South Korea. 
Yeah, yeah. You really take a holistic approach to these industries, um, and give the people what they want and what they need, right? Um, and you have to sort of have people uh, listening to the pulse uh, locally, at least in the community, and say, "What can we? What can we do here? What can we do to make sure that this that we we do take an approach that we're being safe and we're taking a look at COVID and ongoing restrictions and things, but planning for not only opening up but getting people to come out to feel safe and to feel like, oh, I have a I have a place here, or maybe I'm going to go try this, you know, or I'm I'm going to." tip my hand into this. Uh, it's been a couple of years, right? So it, it's going to take a lot of support. So yeah, we're here for the long term and we want to connect those dots, bring in non-endemics. Uh, I mean, that's really the beauty of it. I can't say enough, the sponsoring ship opportunities and, and crossover, uh, whether it's interdisciplinarily in school and education, uh, or just like you're saying, hey, here's some retail, here's a food outlet. Uh, it, all, all of these things, they really have a, a place here. Go watch League of Legends World Championships. Just Google any one of those things and really just pause it in any given scene and look at all the people in the room, all of those jobs that are being created. Uh, it's astounding. So speaking of League of Legends um, World Championships, um, the Aloha Stadium is going to be basically rebuilt into an ent- entertainment kind of center. And I understand that there's opportunities for esports there. Um, thoughts on that? Yeah, I think that um, if there is not a, some sort of gaming or esports space there, it's an opportunity for somebody else. I can I can put leave it at that if I if I needed to. But yeah, it should 100 percent be on the on the table on the planning board. Um, I think that this is not going to go away. As I was saying, and that's a great opportunity to bring in um, new events, new planning. We look at these you know opportunities like COVID, where a lot of things did shut down full stop, and you incorporate other aspects for opportunity like esports. And there's a lot of events that could have been running throughout that. And you only need, you know, a minimal amount of, of space to, to host some virtual events and programming through esports. And I think it's, again, it's this sort of peripheral lifeline that a lot of people maybe weren't thinking of, uh, or maybe they were too eager even a couple of years ago. And COVID provided this early, or early correction in esports where people said, okay, where can we carefully spend our money to make sure we're getting this value? So I think as you see these sort of important hallmark spaces being built, rebuilt, and rededicated like a uh, stadium i think you're going to see um yeah that how can it not be involved uh it would be a, it would be shocking if it wasn't um sure. i'd love to be at that that conversation yeah and you know um people in hawaii know a very famous event promoter who passed away fairly recently and that was tom moffat and so i often think that we sort of need a, a tom moffat of esports someone who is you know, an event promoter. And if we had some amazing facilities, um, you know, I mean, we've got your facility, but like some even bigger facilities, we could have some incredible events in Hawaii. Absolutely. Yeah. I think, I think we'll see those. Those are coming. I really do. I think the we have, you know, I think HPU, like you said, sees the writing on the wall opportunity for well, let's let's really see if we can build these events out, kick this up. And I think that's going to happen. But then again, you have the esports alliance um, coming into coming into fruition here, and that's no coincidence. And that's again to, to to make sure that when we do bring these events here, as they are coming, they're you know they're coming right now. People are bidding for them, um, and they're going to get bigger and better. That we're providing for the community and that the money as much hopefully you know money and education experience maybe stays on island as we can as we can you know and we can provide these things so that if we do have these triple a companies come and they say hey we want to get a bid for this how much is it going to cost we can turn around and say this is the production company of, of talented esports broadcasters and crew we have and we can provide them for this and here's the food and here's the vendors for shirts and everything and here's the here's the spaces so that's the idea and it's coming and so how um, how does um, esports in Hawaii compare to esports on the mainland, do you think, or in Asia? Um, well, I think that that is a great question. I think in a couple of aspects, um, we're sort of at early earlier stages in development than a lot of esports. 
you know, presences are on the mainland. Uh, but I think that's good. I think that people are taking a little bit more of a careful approach uh, with the questions they're asking to do, do we want to commit to having esports? And um, just as an example, I put that through the lens of a parent, right? So am I, am I making sure my student and my child is getting value by having this in their school, you know, like just that question alone, those are the questions that we're making sure we answer right now, even before, you know, um, the big money questions and, and how are we going to make sure that this thing gets as big as it can and all those, all those aspects, we really are taking a careful approach to making sure that this is legitimate and it's adding value uh, to, to the students, right, to the, to the people that need it most, maybe the people that if, if this esports community program didn't exist, they might not have gotten into esports, right? We don't necessarily want to serve the people that are uh, at the top of their rank already. Like we're, we're happy to be that vehicle uh, for them to grow and become the best esports player and professional they can. But we do also want to make sure we're grabbing, you know, that student that maybe they never would have got their hands on a controller. Otherwise we, we want that as well. So how can people find out more about Hawaii Esports Alliance? Absolutely. Yeah. Hawaii Esports Alliance uh, dot org uh, would be the best way to check out them, learn some more information. And you're going to see a lot more coming out there. we got some cool programming coming up in the future. Uh, so be sure to check that out. Get involved. Uh, if you have an esports uh, call to action mission, something you'd like to see happen, reach out for sure. And you can also find information about HPU uh, on our socials at HPU esports, uh, twitch.tv slash HPU esports or uh, hpu.edu slash esports to get uh, all kinds of deals. We're running promotions at the arena all the time and we're open to the public every day at 11. So stop by for sure. All right. Well, I'm looking forward to going to HPU and checking out your uh, arena and uh, uh, playing a few games. So uh, anyway, uh, thank you so much, Jordan. Appreciate you coming on and telling us all about HPU and the Hawaii Esports Alliance. Thank you. We really appreciate it. All right, and thank you to our viewers for joining us today. Next week, my guest will be Brandon Boosman, partner and director of Government Affairs of Global Market Advisors to talk about esports gambling. See you then. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.